Wizard number five is code 178 with the speech, Simply Put. In April of last year, I was in my living room watching a Black Lives Matter demonstration unfold on TV. Protesters demanded justice in one corner while police stared solemnly from the other. And that's when something unforgettable happened. Now, seemingly out of nowhere, a young woman emerged from the crowd, boldly approached an officer, and handed him a peace offering. The whole world seemed to hold its breath as she claimed her Tiananmen Square moment. And I, along with millions, wondered who exactly this brave soul was. And that's when I realized, that's Kendall Jenner. Noted Kardashian reality star turned supermodel, starring in a Pepsi commercial. You know, I don't even need to tell you what happened next, because you know that upon receiving their Pepsis, both protesters and police became one. <laughs> Dancing, high-fiving, singing a Kardashian kumbaya. And now, I am pleased to announce that black lives finally matter. <laughs> Up next, Kylie Jenner ends Islamophobia with a can of Mountain Dew. <laughs> yeah, it should come as no surprise that upon airing, this ad was met with a tidal wave of backlash against its many faults. But Nathaniel Friedman of the New York Times pointed out something insightful when he wrote that the ad oversimplified a complex racial movement into something trite and easily fixed. Because unfortunately, in a world where simplicity reigns supreme, this habit of oversimplification transcends advertising. And that's my concern. I fear that today, we oversimplify the inherently complex with disturbing frequency, be it politically or personally. Gone is our appreciation of nuance and depth, replaced instead with a national appetite for sound bites and slogans. Now, to put it simply, we put things too simply. And in the process, journalist Byron Williams explains that we begin to seek the easy answer, even when the difficult one, however elusive, is most necessary. So today, let's examine how we oversimplify. First, issues, and next, people. Then we'll discuss the harms of doing so before finally coming up with some not-so-simple solutions. So don't get me wrong. Now, Pepsi is not the only one guilty of oversimplifying race in America. Last year, Illinois Governor Bruce Rauner proved his commitment to racial equality by walking on stage in Chicago and chugging a glass of chocolate milk. As he drank, the governor said, and I quote, mmm, <laughs> diversity. <laughs> that actually happened. <laughs> and though that sounds crazy, like him, we often oversimplify issues and end up minimizing them. Don't believe me. Well, how many times have you heard someone debunk global warming by citing the robust evidence that it's cold outside? <laughs> we do this with every issue under the sun. In fact, just last January, while discussing immigration policy, TV pundit Tommy Lahren argued for border security by stating that it's simple. The same way we lock the doors to our houses at night, we ought to lock the doors to our country as well. And you know what? I'm going to go out on a limb here and say, I don't think Tommy Lahren likes chocolate milk. <laughs> I 
I mean, really, immigration is the job of 22 federal agencies and can't possibly be reduced to such a facile analogy. Now, for that matter, neither can the gun debate. But that doesn't stop millions from echoing the line we've all heard. Guns don't kill people. People kill people. Which sounds true enough. But as articulated by Dr. David Kyle Johnson of King's College, this defense cleverly evades the fact that guns make it substantially easier for people to kill people. You know, the fact is, when we adopt such simplistic rhetoric, when we adopt such simplistic rhetoric, it's not just the issues we oversimplify, but there are solutions as well. You want to put a stop to illegal immigration? Great. Build a wall, crime will fall. And if you want to end school shootings, then just arm the teachers. You know, these so-called solutions are little more than band-aids for bullet wounds. They don't solve anything. They just deny us the rational discourse we deserve. Now, we don't just oversimplify to minimize issues, but also to marginalize the people we don't like or agree with. Frankly, it's what Hillary Clinton did when she referred to millions of Trump supporters as a basket of deplorables, as if their stories were all exactly the same. And we routinely do this to each other, constructing narratives that are appealingly simple, but mistaken. It's why one in three Americans believe that the root of poverty is laziness. Because it's just easier to blame low-income people for their plight than it is to address the complex inequities that force them into it. We have begun to argue down what author Michael Lysak calls the path of least resistance, not only reducing people to talking points, but bypassing reason. And it's not just illogical, it's reductive. It's reductive when the Department of Health and Human Services intentionally defines gender in the simplest possible terms thereby eliminating the federal protections of transgender people. And it's reductive when a former senator tells the teenage survivors of a school shooting that instead of making Congress solve their problem, why can't they just learn CPR? These oversimplifications accomplish nothing besides marginalizing people and trivializing their strife. And I hope we can all agree that that is deplorable. Yeah, I have no doubt that the harms of this habit have been felt by each of us. But the harm I fear most, the one most responsible for eroding nuance and wrecking our discourse, is the false dichotomy, wherein we insist that answers must be either black or white, left or right, and nothing in between. Yesterday's complexities become the binaries of tomorrow. If that sounds abstract, it isn't. I've lived it. When then-candidate Trump proposed his Muslim ban in 2016, my neighbor told me that I had nothing to fear because I was one of the good ones. You know, I have to ask, were the 50 Muslims slaughtered in a New Zealand mosque three months ago good ones or bad ones? When she said that, I felt so diminished. But what really struck me is that she didn't intend to hurt me. You know, her words lacked malice, but they were injected with bias. And that's what makes this so insidious. And we often don't mean to oversimplify, it's just so easy to. And along the way, whatever our intent, communities are categorized, issues minimized, and people, you and me, are dehumanized. So how do we solve this? Well, the simple answer is we can't. It'd be absurd of me to denounce quick fixes and simple solutions in one breath and then offer them in the next. So I won't. But I will suggest this. 
We are not neatly drawn people living in a neatly drawn nation. Our lives are rife with contradiction and ambiguity at every turn. So how can we ensure that our discourse and our politics reflect that? Well, I believe that starts with rejecting the oversimplified false binaries presented to us in America today. What does that mean? Well, take the issues of our time. It means believing the radical notion that we can uphold the Second Amendment and at the same time we can end gun violence once and for all. It's not either or. We can protect our borders and we can treat immigrants and asylum seekers with the compassion they deserve. And most importantly, as Americans, we can love Cardi B and Nicki Minaj. It's not mutually exclusive. Let us not be tricked by the false choices meant to divide us. Next, in our own lives, we must make a commitment to meaningful communication. You know, the farther away you stand from something, the simpler it seems. So be it on Twitter or at Thanksgiving dinner, the next time you find yourself debating the other side, get close. You know, not physically, that's assault, but... <laughs> but ask questions. Engage with the intent to learn and not persuade. Try verbally reiterating the other person's point to them so as to ensure you don't oversimplify their argument. And the next time you hear the words, simply put, ask yourself, can this actually be put simply? If so, great. But I'd ask you to consider the simplest equation of all. One plus one equals two. That's pretty basic, right? Well, what if I told you that the mathematical proof for that equation is 372 pages long? Seventy years ago, Albert Einstein told us we ought to make our world as simple as possible, but no simpler. And he was right. In a world whose extraordinary beauty is thanks to its complexity, we owe that to each other. And that is as simple as it gets. <laughs>